Well, good afternoon. Um, so like Alma said, the, the idea of this lecture is to a bit put all you have you learned all that what you, you learn on proteomics into a broader context with the other layers of omic data to, uh, to have a global picture. So uh, of course, in that short of time, we won't be able to learn all the methods, but the idea is just to get a global view of what you can do with your proteomic data and the other type of omic data and the global strategy uh, for the integration and some consideration if you eventually want to design a multi-omic experiment, what you, take to, what you need to take into account. Um, there's gonna be no statistic <laughs> that makes you happy. Um, so what is multi-omic integration? Basically, it's the idea of integrating the different uh, biological layers into a model. And those layers can be genomic, transcriptomic, proteomic, and other type of data to have a global uh, view of a system. And why would we do that? Well, because the molecular level um, work together. And if we only uh, study one omic layer, we may not capture the uh, integration in between those layers. And how do we do this? Well, with advanced computational methods that we won't see today, but um, I'll point you some reviews if that's something you want to do eventually. Um, and of course, that requires special uh, methodology because all the omics uh, data are complex and have um, some special characteristics. And um, globally, what we can learn um, uh, especially from the integration of those um, omic data, is to have a better view of how the molecular mechanism works. Um, it can help to find better biomarkers because uh, depending on the complexity of a phenotype, it's maybe not one layer or like one gene or one protein that can make the perfect biomarker for a certain disease or a phenotype. And it also can help to do a better stratification of patients to have a more personalized um, treatment for those patients. So um, those are the classical omic layers uh, that are normally integrated into uh, multi-omic models. So the first layers, if we go into a hierarchy, even if um, there's not one that's more important than the other, is the genetics. So those are the DNA sequence and the genetic variants that are normally done through sequencing. Uh, we also have the epigenomics data, which are modification to the of the genome that are reversible, so that either the histone marks or the uh, DNA methylation. We also have the transcriptomic that also is obtained by sequencing normally, where we measure the expression of gene or also non-coding RNAs. Well, I don't think I need to uh, talk about proteomics. You have enough at this point, but we can also integrate the proteome and also the phosphate proteome. I don't know if you had a couple of words on that. And also the metabolome can also uh, be integrated, which is the um, end product of the cell. And we can also integrate other type of data for those omics. So it can be clinical data. Sometimes um, we have a lot of uh, data on the, the phenotype, which can be treated as a um, omic data because we're talking about uh, hundred and ten thousand uh, type of data that can be integrated. We can also integrate uh, metagenomics. So for the microbiote, the species that uh, live uh, well on um, the skin, because uh, or on the gut, or even on the soil, if you're more, mostly working on the plants, and uh, there's also radiomics. Uh, so basically imagery that also that can be integrated with those omic data. Since this is a proteomic workshop, I'm going to focus on some of the example of integrating um, omics, type of omics data with proteomics. So um, one of them is the idea of connecting genomics with proteomics to have a better understanding of a complex phenotype. So uh, the genomic normally uh, 
provide information about the, um, the genetics or the DNA sequence, uh, more especially the variants. So uh, the, I don't know if you're uh, familiar with SNPs. Okay. So the idea is that we can connect those SNPs with the expression of proteins um, to find if a variant can, um, or a genetic variant can influence the expression of that SNP. And we can see that the expression of that protein as an intermediate phenotype to another more complex phenotype. So basically this type of experiment, what people do is that uh, this is an experiment on liver, for example, where they collected the proteomics of the population and also the DNA. Um, and for every um, variation, they tried to do an association with the expression of the protein and found what they call a PQTL, so a variant that influenced specifically um, that protein. And normally we like to link those uh, variant. So if a variant is a PQTL and the same variant is also linked to a disease, sometimes it helps to rebuild the mechanism of how the specific uh, variant influence the protein and how this protein can influence after that, the main phenotype. After that, we can also better understand the, mecha the regulatory mechanism by integrating uh, transcriptomic and proteomic. This is really a popular way of, in of doing multiomic data. So traditionally, people have often uh, used transcriptomic to help uh, discover new protein or um, peptide for the pro their proteomic data. So this field is called proteogenetics. But um, the prote uh, proteomics can also help the transcriptome uh, because it can help to see if even if the gene is expressed, it doesn't mean that the protein is going to be expressed. So it helps to um, understand the fine tuning of that level. Um, uh, also, it's possible to integrate proteomic with metabolomic data. This is mostly to get a better view of the, the cellular metabolism. So uh, what's going on in the cell. So uh, people like to connect the protein, uh, specifically the enzyme level with the metabolites to have a better understanding of those metabolic pathways that you all know from KEG. And, um, we can also combine the proteomic data with multiple type of um, omic data to get a, a better view or to find better biomarkers. So biomarkers are a set of molecules um, that can describe a particular disease or a, a particular condition. So the idea is that sometimes um, we get a better classification uh, of the profiles if we, we mix different type of um, omic data because some of the disease or the phenotype can be involved in multiple layers. Um, and what is interesting into that type of design is also to have a longitudinal um, design where we, that takes a lot of money though, <laughs> is to actually have um, for a certain period of time to capture the omics data and to see the dynamics of how the different layers actually evolve at a different rate. So maybe sometimes we can see the protein change, uh, the, sorry, the transcriptomic can change before the protein, um, et cetera. And one other thing that the integrating multi-omic data can help is to address the data gap because all the different omic have their own limitation. I'm sure you have addressed some of them for the proteomic that, for example, the protein with low abundance are harder um, to capture. And um, some of the um, omics data, like the genetic, won't capture the environmental effect. So by combining all those data, we fill in the technical problematic and we get like a better view of what's going on. So now we'll, it's the, um, a mo bit more technical what we're going to see. It's just uh, an overview of the approach and the strategies that are used to integrate data. 
we can classify the integration into two categories. So the N integration or P, uh, P integration also called sometimes horizontal or vertical uh, integration. So in multi-omic, what you mostly going to see is the energy creation, where the idea is that you have sample for the same um, people or same individuals um, for the different omics. So the N refer to the samples that's going to be measured on the different omics. Um, so um, I don't this is what you have uh, input into your R. So uh, one of the matrix is going to be for um, all your individuals and all the predictors, so all the molecules you're going to measure. For example, this is if this is your protein. So you're going to have measured your protein for uh, 10 people and for all the proteins in your sample. And on the same individuals, you're gonna measure also other type of omic data, for example, uh, transcriptomics or metabolomics. The P integration is um, instead of integrating data for the same individual, it's gonna be integrating data for the same predictors. So the same molecules. So normally this is gonna be done for the same omic data. For example, you have multiple um, proteomic um, uh, experiment that you want to integrate together. Um, so the, you're going to take the one with the same predictor, but it won't be on the same individuals. Um, for the rest of the presentation, we're mostly going to concentrate on the inter N integration because that's what mainly do for the multi-omic data, but no, it's possible also if you have multiple experiment um, on the same omic data to integrate them but you're gonna have to do a normalization or batch correction to remove some of the technical noise. So this is a slide I like because to resume, basically all the big concept of the multi-omic integration. So the first one is what we call conceptual integration. It's probably the most simple one. Uh, it's basically the idea of using data that, or concept that are uh, already known uh, for, and analyze uh, and combine those information for the different omic to get some hypothesis. So uh, more practically what can be done is that, for example, you have an experiment on, um, on gene expression, one uh, experiment on proteomic data. You take the result of those two experiments and you combine them, for example, on a pathway to see if some of the molecules are involved in the same pathway. Um, this is, I said, most of the people when they do multi-omic data at this point, that's the type of integration they do because um, most of the, the experimental design will limit you to that. Uh, because to do the other type of integration, you need to have really have this uh, specifically for statistic integration, you need to have the data measure on the exact same uh, individuals or samples to be able to do the, um, some real correlation. Um, I'll skip already to the statistical integration because I think in order of um, complexity, it's the one that comes after. So this is normally what people um, have in mind when they want to do that, um, that uh, multi-omic integration is to really do some statistic in between those um, the different layers to uh, find some correlation in between them um, and find patterns or biomarkers. Uh, I'll come back on the next slide on the different type of um, multi uh, statistical integration. Um, but I want to just touch a word on more complex type of integration, which is the one that are model based, which is really a mathematical modeling uh, to do simulation. So basically, this is done after uh, the statistical integration is done and you have a small model. You can um, build a mathematical model uh, that involve different layers to do simulation. And there's another type of integration that mostly focus on the um, interaction in between the layers to build some um, multi-omic network to have a global idea for, of how the system works together. 
So um, just again, a classification of the different type of statistical model for a multiomic approach. Um, we can cluster them into three different types of model. So there's the multivariate model, um, which is maybe you have heard SPLS or um, canonical uh, correlation analysis. So this is the, those types of model. So basically we take all the omic data and try to um, eventually and try to find some regression together. There's some model that are called concatenation, uh, concatenation models that basically we try to fuse all the omic data into a big matrix and after that run the model with that. But uh, that, of course, have some problematic because not the omic data have the same size and we run into some problems. And there's a hybrid in between them is the transformation based model where you take um, your omic data individually and treat them in an intermediate state, for example, a graph and merge the different graph after that to have um, a consensus graph of the different omic data. Now I have a small example of um, an analysis for a, multi, uh, for a multivariate model. So um, it's a method um, that's called um, Diablo from the R package Mixomix. So basically it's, um, it's called a block sparse uh, PLS. <laughs> if there's any statistician in the room. And the idea is to merge different type of omic data to find a signature that's going to be able to cluster different type of patient. So in this case, is to be able to subgroup, uh, find subgroup of breast cancer. So in that experiment, what they have done is that they have measured the, um, the gene the uh, microRNAs, the epigenetics, and the proteomics data for all those patients. And those patients either belong to three different, uh, actually, uh, four different type, subtypes of breast cancer. And they tried to find, is there a combination of um, omic, uh, omic or just molecules that's going to make the best signature to discriminate those patients? And what we can see here, so um, we have um, the correlation in between the different omic, and we can see that some omics are closer than the others. For example, the um, proteomics and the epigenetics are closer to the, um, the gene compared to the um, uh, microRNA were really uh, for, uh, more different than the other types of omic data. And after the model was run, they were able to identify a, um, a, a signature with different type of, um, of omic data that was the best to discriminate the patients. And what you can see here, the different colors uh, represent, yes, no, you don't see when I, <laughs> I point, I'm so sorry. Is that that's this one? Not even, okay, oh, I'll go there from here. So the different colors, please don't step too far away from the computer, but I'll set you up with the highlight with the pointer. Okay, or I'll just say, say the colors, that's fine. Yes, so you can use this guy. Oh, thanks. Um, oh. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so, for example, in blue, we have some of the epigenetics marks. Um, in red, we have the gene, the protein, and the color you see in between them are actually the, the, the correlation. So in red, if they're down correlated, or blue, if they're up, um, positively correlated. And, or you can also see it as a heat map where uh, here on the rows, you have the different subtypes of cancer. And we can see that um, for the different type of omic data, we have a good clustering. And, what is also interesting is to do the interpretation of those data. So here is, I think you had, you touch word on the gene set enrichment or pathways enrichment. So this also can be done for the different omic data. And what we can see here is the different pathway where it's 
where is enriched. And we can see if how many proteins uh, and how many genes were actually enriched for that pathways. And we can see that some of the pathways are enriched for both type of molecule. And some of them are really specific to one type of molecule. Um, another example is the use of multi-omic data to do prediction. Now I'm a bit spoiling um, Michael for the machine learning after, but basically uh, we can also use um, machine learning technique. So, so mostly on concatenation um, model. So basically what they did is that they took patients um, at baseline and look how many of them have de developed uh, type 2 diabetes 10 years after. And with the data at baseline, they did the, the genome, the proteome, the metabolome. They had a lot of clinical data and phenotype data. And they tried to see if they can predict uh, with uh, all those data who's going to develop uh, or, or going to uh, get type 2 diabetes. And they have found. Um, Features so again a, um, a group of different type of omic that was uh, good to predict who's going to develop the type two diabetes. And uh, lastly, I wanted to talk. This is a bit more open to discussion. A bit of the challenge and the consideration. Uh, to take into account if you're interested in eventually doing some multi-omic integration or design an experiment um, uh, that's going to take multi-omic data. Um, so one of the problematic is the complexity of the data and the volume. As you have seen with proteomic data, it's just one omic is already complex to analyze uh, because of the just the characteristic of the data. And all the those omic data have their own characteristic. So it's important to, um, before to do the integration, to really treat the omic data um, separately with the standard of care of, or the gold standards of each of those omic data. Um, and um, after that, there's practical um, consideration. So we, we, I think every scientist wants to do some multi-omic experiment, but um, there's a reality of cost and uh, also sample that are available. So sometimes people cut uh, short. <laughs> and after that, it's really hard to do some real uh, integration or statistical integration. So we can always do, like I said, conceptual integration to get some hypothesis, but sometimes it's probably better maybe to have two omics data, but really well characterized, then maybe three, but with some missing data and um, yeah, <laughs> and, uh, less uh, important data. So I, I guess mentioned here that missing data is often a problematic where um, we wanted to maybe uh, have a 100 patient uh, for that experiment, but for on one omic, we have only 10 patients. On the uh, other uh, omic, we, are, we have uh, half of the population. So to have good statistical um, integration, we really need the measurement on all of them. And another point is the uh, importance of the experimental design. So on what you're going to measure your omic data. Um, this is a real case example of um, transcriptomic and proteomic data that we tried to integrate. So the first one was done on cell culture. So the transcriptome, so that's on the, uh, no, on the x-axis, was measured on the same cell than the proteomic data. And what you see here is just the beta coefficient. So um, if they were upregulated or downregulated compared to the control, and what we can see is on both uh, omic data, they actually have a nice correlation. So if it was done correlated in one technology, it was also done correlated in the other one. Here is an example on the, of the same thing. So I have the proteomic here and the transcriptomic, but this was done on different animals. So it was supposed to be the same condition, 
but they were done two months apart, so not on the exact same animal. And what we can see is that we have just random dots everywhere. So uh, <laughs> the lesson learned is that um, uh, there are so many um, factors that can influence the data that to do uh, that it's really time sensitive, those omic data. So uh, we, we need, really need to be careful when designing the experiment for the integration. And the other point or challenge that we still have is to interpret the results. Um, so uh, we know uh, because of the hierarchy that uh, of the molecular principle that normally the the uh, genes are translated into protein, etc. That we know some of the the known interaction in between the molecules, but we can always find correlation in between everything. So uh, making sense of that after that is still a challenge and it's not to be neglected. So to summarize, basically, I hope I have sparked something for multiomic and um, I think it's a really interesting field to help to identify some new uh, biomarkers, um, also to be able to uh, cluster uh, individual better or even to help to um, work into the mechanism of what's going on in the cells. Um, um, basically, um, uh, there's still some challenge that have to be taken into account, but I think if you're aware of that before designing your experiment, it it's really gonna, really gonna help. Um, I'm not talk specifically about, except for the Diablo, about one computational method because there exists a lot of them and selecting your methodology really gonna depend on what's your biological question and your study design. Uh, but there exists a lot of reviews on which method perform better in which uh, scenario. And finally, um, so yeah, take time of designing your your experimental your experiment carefully because it's really going to affect your result. So um, it's better to decide at the beginning. Yes, I want to do uh, multiomic data instead of saying, "Oh, well, I have my proteomic. Let's add the transcriptome also to complete." It's harder to that to actually have a, a good view <laughs> of the data. So um, next we have. Mika is going to take about EI, but I can take some question or if you have a specific question about your design or one type of omic you would like to interpret.